Good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of High Top Sports. Happy Sunday to you all. It's officially Hey FSU Week, right? We can start uh, hopping on that train and find a common ground once again instead of being at each other's throats as Gator fans of we should be supporting Billy, we should be supporting Billy. One thing we can all agree on is we all hate FSU. And we can all enjoy the next six days of hating FSU until we play them on Saturday uh, in the backup of the battle, or uh, the battle of the backups, <laughs> I should say, as it seems to be that Graham Mertz uh, will be out, will be done for, for the rest of the season, as will Jordan Travis, as he had a pretty atrocious injury yesterday. Uh, but Graham Mertz seems to have had a, a fractured collarbone. So uh, they talked yesterday in the press conference, not quite sure if it's going to be a surgery uh, type of need of an injury, but will be done for, will be sitting out for the rest of the season. <laughs> During the interview, somebody goes, hey, will you be back next week? Bruh. <laughs> no, Billy didn't say anything, but the news came out later on that he will be out for the rest of the season. And obviously, I think we all knew that when we saw him go down, we saw him sit on the sideline without his shoulder pads, that it was done for. But uh, Maxi Brown, man, stepped in and did a phenomenal job, which we'll get into in a moment. But let's give our flowers to Mr. Graham Mertz, boys and girls. I was out there tweeting last night. He had me fired up, man. It was uh, it was a blast to watch somebody to play with so much passion. And just to think of where he came from, how much flack that he had. He was the last rated quarterback coming into this season. You know, favored to finish last in the SEC. A ton of hate coming out of Wisconsin. A complete resurgence of his career. We talked Wednesday about his future, where he was going to be headed. Is he going to go to the draft? The portal, right, was a question. Is he going to stay? This changes everything with injury, with how Max Brown came in and did, with DJ Lagway. It's going to be an interesting thing to see how it unfollows. Jack Miller, I'm, I'm assuming, will we'll be, um, we'll be heading out. So if we're able to have Max Brown, uh, Mertz, and DJ Lagway, son, what a quarterback room. I mean, that well, all of a sudden, we're right back to being healthy again and uh, a nice, thick, competitive room uh, going into next year, which we'll kind of get into about the exciting things that, I mean, if you kind of see how it's building and what the players are going to be on the football field for next year, if things can stay intact and if we can be aggressive in the portal, we can, we can, uh, we can, you know, be excited for the future, but I get ahead of myself just a little bit there. So look, kudos to Mertz, man. Again, shout out to him. Nothing but love for that young man. If you, uh, you guys see him on the side of the road, just give him a hug. Okay. Just give him a hug. Tell him, thank you. You know, it's been a blast watching him, uh, this past year. So We'll see if we, we get lucky and we get another year at him. But uh, that's it for Matt, Mr. Mr. Graham Mertz. Uh, concerns continue to rise. So, you know, we, we had a call in show yesterday, which we're going to play a call uh, that somebody called in. And, then you know, a lot of people call in. They're usually pretty positive. We all kind of have the same outlook. The chat and people who call in are always different, always varying. But somebody called in and had more of a, you know, a more pessimistic point of view of it, which I'm not saying that negatively. I actually enjoyed his point of view, and it was actually refreshing to hear somebody – there, and I, I hear in the comments that Billy needs to go, and I see on Twitter that Billy needs to go, but I've never had a, like a healthy conversation with that person. Uh, so it was good to hear from him. But the re, again, the concerns continue to rise, and it's something that where someone like myself, who's been a, a very big b a believer in Billy, starts to question these things, right? We have the same situation going into halftime, minute and a half. We've got an opportunity to go down and put some points on the board, be aggressive, double dip because we're getting the ball back. And we, we again, we just kind of fold, fold like a lawn chair when it's time. And those things are concerning. Last last little bit of the drive there, we kick the field goal where Trace Matt comes on. We, again, we fold like a lawn chair. We have an opportunity. Max Brown just moved the ball with ease down the football field, right? Little, little, little RPO action, little rollout, whatever. I mean, Max Brown was doing his job. I understand you don't want to get too crazy. You don't want to make a mistake because he just fumbled it, at, you know, in the red zone. The drive before that, which we're going to get into in a moment, him kind of re referencing that, which felt was a little bit harsh, but... I, I digress. So I understand the reason for a conservative play call because if he gets too aggressive, guess what's going to happen? We're going to be like, well, you shouldn't have done that. You should have you should have been more conservative with a with a you know young quarterback in play. So it's a lose-lose situation in my opinion. But three runs up the middle, Billy, <laughs> right? It's just like you're just playing like the, for the time. It's like, sorry, it wasn't three runs. It was two runs up the middle and then a bounce to the outside and then ETN runs out of bounds, which then basically defeats the whole purpose of just running up the middle three times in a row. Because, you know, they're trying to run the clock out. And that's, again, these things start to kind of cross question because everyone's like, who is that to blame on? Is that the coaching? Is that is that ETN? I'm, I'm not going to get into who's right or wrong because if you, whoever you ask, you're going to get a different answer, right? Coach should have said, hey, get out, don't go out of bounds. I, I don't think that he intended ETN to run 20 yards to the right side. I don't think that was the play call. So everyone's like, he should have told him to say, get, get in bounds. I think ETN was trying to make a play. I think ETN wanted to get into the end zone and... Just wasn't thinking and moving north and south, and that's just kind of how it is sometimes. But 
I mean, again, yes, maybe he should have iter- you know iterated in the in the uh, huddle. Get it? Don't make sure you don't go out of bounds. He probably did, but that's the thing is that he may have said it and it didn't happen anyways because Etn is essentially he is the last play because he's he's got the ball in his hands. He's gonna make the last uh, the call on what he wants to do. So. I don't know. That was frustrating to me. And then uh, obviously we kicked a field goal, which was great. And then we had him fourth and 17, which we'll, we, I will, we will forever hear uh, fourth and 17 of blowing the coverage. They asked about how, what happened there. And he's like, yeah, we just, you know, we had guys in the place and they just, they didn't cover it. So typical Billy response on that. But those things again, continue to happen. It's not like it's just a one-off thing where it's like, that was a blunder, right? It's week in and week out. Now we see something where it's just like, that seemed, that seems very elementary. That has nothing to do with even because, again, the biggest complaint is like he can't coach in the SEC. For me, those things are SEC related. That's just football's knowledge. That's, that's, that's high school shit, right? That's just basic one on one. How are we going to make, you know, clock, man- clock management, honestly, is what it's coming down to, boys and girls, which I defended him last year way too many times. Now I regret doing that for the clock management reasons because he's continued to do it. He, and the caller who calls in will get to it. He alludes to the fact that Billy always says that after each press conference and each loss now, which is six now, uh, you know, we, we'll learn something from that. What the fuck are we learning now? You know, and he'll say that too, which is a good point, because if we all learned each time we failed, uh, you know, we would be much further along. And we don't seem to be that. And that's where people are going to start, you know, becoming impatient and where the, I mean, they're already impatient as is. But look, I, I get it. Now, we win this football game. Do these concerns rise? Probably not. And that was the thing I kept going to yesterday because I felt like we had it. We, we, I felt like we won and we just like ripped away from us because we win that football game. The, the negatives settle down and the, all the pros rise, right? That Max, Max Brown stepped up. Uh, Trevor Etienne had another big game. Uh, Ricky Pearsall, Khalil Jackson's a big catch. All the good things that happened, those, those, those rise. Us, all, us holding uh, Schrader to 30 yards in the second half, right? Those things start to come up. That becomes the new narrative. Fortunately, that's not how it works. You lose, all that goes by the wayside, and it's all the reasons why you lost, and that's why we're here today with that. Now, I do have some things to talk about with Maximus Prime, and I could be looking into this, so I don't want to like create something that's not out of nothing, but with Max not pr- playing and with him coming in and just looking like he did, there's going to be a lot of questions of, like, why didn't we see him sooner? That was hap- that, that was questioned yesterday, like, not even just being a starter. I think Gray Merce has done a phenomenal job, but like, let's get this guy involved more, right? Just the fact of his legs, his ability to move the ball outside the pocket. When you see something, hey, like, wait, we're not we're not able to get enough time. Let's try something new. Let's bring like a Tebow West thing. And I know that's not maybe Billy, and we we're all trying to put our own spin on things. And I understand that, but don't you wish we would have seen a little bit more, especially with you know what happened last night? And that's not always the game plan, and I get that 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 stuff. But I mean, Max, Max looked really good, and he fought. He was obviously started starting the third string, and then moved his way to second string. But when talking about Max Brown compared to Mertz, which Mertz obviously has a much different place in Billy's heart, I feel like it was very lackluster <laughs> in regards to Max Brown. Like, I, don't, I think he did a phenomenal job. I know people are going to kind of give him some heat for the fumble, which he kind of does. But I don't know. Take a listen, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. And, you know, give Max some credit. Um, you know, Max settled in there a little bit and uh, made a few plays. Um, Obviously, he's a he's a good athlete, and uh, we were able to use his legs a little bit in the read game, and uh, he made some throws as well. So, um, you know, Max has worked hard. I can't I can't uh, talk enough about how much improvement you know since the day first day he got there, uh, and he's a competitor. You know, I think um, ultimately he showed that. Fourth and seven. So, I don't know. I just feel like because I see him talk about Mertz. With more, a little more passion, he's like, yeah, you know, he came in, you know, he did his job. Hell yeah, I did. I mean, I felt like there should have, little, have been a little bit more passion. I know you're coming off a loss, but I'm like, hey, how about that? How about how about Max Brown? How about him coming in there in a hostile environment, getting ten points on the board, stepping up, becoming a leader? Like he looked like a general out there. I just felt like there should have been a little more love for Maxie B. Is all that I'm saying because again, then he he asked him a little bit later on. This is clips. This next clip's a little bit longer. Just his preparation for FSU. It feels like when he's talking, there's like a big butt behind it. Like, hey, like he's athletic, uses his feet, does this. But that's how it feels. Like he's like not completely sold on what Max Brown's able to do. Again, maybe I'm looking into it too much. I've watched it a few times because it just doesn't fit right. It doesn't sit right. Like, what, what are we missing here? Like, I thought he did a phenomenal job. But for, for all things considered, here's the, the last half. A game with the magnitude like Florida State. Um, in the yeah, 
Well, he just played against the number nine team in the country on the road, right? So, um, you know, he'll be a lot more prepared rather than not doing it, you know. So, um, look, Max is a worker. You know, he'll start uh, when he gets back Sunday. And we've got a routine for the quarterback. It's worked in the past. And we'll play to his strengths, you know. And, he, you know, there'll be some confidence that he can get from tonight after moving the team a little bit and making a handful of plays. And there'll be things that he learns from tonight that he can do better. Um, and I can tell you this, I think the players will rally around the situation, you know. I thought you saw a little bit of that tonight, mm -hmm. you know, if that makes sense. So, um, you know, Max has the respect of the team because he works his butt off and he's consistent. He's got character. Um, so what a tremendous opportunity for a young player. Is, is that handoff exchange like something that's just because lack of experience and he's not yeah. maybe getting quite the reps he would, that yeah. he's going to get this week? Yeah, that's the one that gets me, you know. Um, you know, there's a lot going through a young man's, you know, mind. Um, ultimately, we got to do a better job. It's simple, simple fundamentals. Um, it's a play that he's run multiple times in his career. Um, we'll look at the tape and I can tell you more, but I think it's just going to be very simple. Hit, it just ball hit the hip of the running back. Um, you know, and that's a big play in the game. I thought it was a little, little, little brutal. Like, yeah, that, that gets me. Like, all of a sudden, now we want to be accountable, <laughs> right? We want to call somebody out because he fumbled the ball because he, he came in. And again, I'm, I'm, I get it. He's, he should, he, you have two sides here, right? The guy's been practicing. He, that's a handoff that he does every single day. Benefit of the doubt. When he, as soon as he came in, I said, I'm excited to see what he's able to do. I'm excited for his athletic ability. But what concerns me? is the fact that, look, Graham Mertz is, is, a, is a proven quarterback. He's got X amount of snaps or games under his belt, right, coming into the season. He just cools the cucumbers, look like that all year long. Max doesn't have any of those things. So that's just, that's par for the course, right? There's, there's going to be an error involved. That's part of it. I don't know. I just feel like out of all the mistakes that have happened, you know, with, <laughs> he's defended putting two guys in the field before with number three jerseys, and this kid makes a fumble blunder, and he's like, yeah, that gets me. That gets me. No, you know what gets me, Billy? You know what fucking grinds my gears is 10 and 13 guys on, on, on special teams week in and week out. Not a guy who hasn't played all year long coming in and just miss, miss the timing up on a fumble. That doesn't get me. <laughs> so like it was, just, I felt like he was just a little critical of old Maxi, Maxi Primus. That's, that's, that's all. Maybe, maybe I'm a little hot still. Maybe I'm still kind of fiend up from it last night, but uh, I don't know. I felt like he was a little too critical of old Maximus Prime. But you guys let me know in the comments. I'm sure you guys will roast me about it saying, no, he was fine. And that's fine. Maybe I overlooked it. But uh, that's how it felt when I was watching it. Gator fan calls in. So like I said, uh, this young man, Rusty, phenomenal mustache, by the way. It was refreshing to get his perspective on it because he said, look, he opens it up transparently. I haven't been a fan of Billy from the beginning. And there's a lot of people that are like that. And like I said, haven't really spoke to one. Uh, I've had a few people that I've, I've had a conversation with. My, my, my pops, actually, he hasn't really been a big believer either. So I've talked to him about it a few times, but he's also talked to other people. So I, it's we're all trying to figure this out because at the end of the day, we all want to win, right? That's We all have the same goal in mind, and whoever that at the, is at the helm doing that, at the end of the day, it don't really matter as long as we got a championship at the end of the day. So, But here's what he had to say. Take a listen, and we'll talk about it. Look at that mustache. You like you it? Know it's gonna be good. You know it's going to be a good call. What's up, A-Dog? So uh, full full transparency here. I've never been on the Napier train since day one. I think okay. he's gonna be a, he's gonna be an eight win a year coach with a ceiling of ten. Um, okay. I, I'm really trying to get you know some understanding of what other people are talking about as far as like Napier's building something. Max Brown is the closest thing to DJ that we have right now. He gives you that that third dimension, right? With an RPO. Sure. But yet as a coaching staff, we make the decision to go really conservative, knowing that we have a defense that can't, can't do anything. Right. Sure. So we run, we run uh, three runs up the middle, try to bounce one outside, right. ETN goes out of bounds. 
course that that plays a major role but <clears throat> we had the talent on the field to get in the end zone knowing that our defense wasn't going to be able to hold a one point lead when does the accountability take effect and when i say accountability it's the same 5 to 6 guys week in week out that decide our fate right it's marshall it's kimber i've seen those two dudes give up on plays multiple times yet they still have a locker they still have a starting spot on the roster and number one for me as far as as far as accountability is uh napier i'm so Mm. sick and that uh you know within the losses we learn lessons if that were the case we'd all be fucking harvard grads by now right because (laughs) this this guy is He's really good at talking in the in the post game without saying anything, without yeah. holding us accountable. Um, as far as uh, you know, Graham Mertz, that dude earned the number fifteen jersey tonight, right? He played with more heart than I've seen in a long time. Um, but I also know that he was playing on borrowed time. What was it, thirty one sacks this year? And they weren't just like pull him down a little bit; they were. They were hard hits on him. We were playing on borrowed time. Max Brown was ready. He showed he was ready. Yeah. There's some timing differences. Everybody's going to have timing differences when you alternate quarterbacks. But Max Brown had that that third dimension to him that could have got us in the end zone and, and really changed the course of the game. I'm just I, – I was pissed tonight. I was pissed tonight. I, I didn't expect to win, but – I didn't realize that the coaching staff would be the ones to hold us back. If anybody no, has look, anything different to say, then they can uh, they can go ahead and fight. Look, I think he does a good job of, I, I think, in, encompassing all the feelings of the people that are not so pro Billy. We, look, there's people that are so pro Billy that are pre- preaching patience, and I think we all have a right into our feeling. I, I preach that week in and week out because I don't think anybody has a true answer yet, but here's the thing. The data on the field, the production on the field continues to support, you know, this type of opinion. And so that voice is going to get louder and louder as the weeks go on as because his concerns are becoming more and more valid. It's supporting what he's saying, right? The questioning of the coaching, the questioning of development, right? I mean, even Stephen Harris, he tweeted out last night, his frustration cannot wait to talk to him tomorrow for Champs Corner. And just dive, you know, deep dive this a little bit more, but there's just levels to it, right? It's it's a development issue. It's it play calling may or may be a little bit of an issue, but it seems it's more just accountability development, which all falls back and leans on coaching. That's where it falls back at the end of the day. And like I've always said, we could try to say it's the defensive line coach, it's the co- cornerback coach, it's the DC, it's the offensive lineman. Ultimately, see what I did there? It goes back to the peak. It goes back to the one guy in the center. Gets paid $7 million a year, like you said to make those tough decisions. Oh, he, I don't think he said in this clip, but he talked about pressure and how's like, look, you're going to pay $7 million a year. That's your job is to, to handle the pressure. So yeah, we can find these guys individually and pick and put prod, but, and that's where this off season, that was another big thing that we talked about on the Colin show is the off season is going to be the, the a huge point of emphasis of what are you going to do? Cause if nothing changes, his, that lease is going to, that leash is going to be extremely short, even shorter than what it is now going into next season. So we will see uh, how that plays a factor into that. And then last but not least is just kind of like my takeaways overall. I've kind of given you throughout the uh, entire segment here. But, uh, you know, I, I hate it. I hate it for the guys because they, obviously they're, they they play with a lot of heart and passion tonight. And I know that's people are overhearing that. But I love the fact that nobody quit, right? It would have been a very easy game to go into and just fold and just lay down against the top, number nine team in the country, against Mizzou on the road. You've got everything going against you. You're on the road. You're playing against number nine team. You haven't looked good. You know, you're coming off a, a, an embarrassing loss against LSU. It's very easy just to hang it up and uh, quit. But they were talking about Ricky Pearsall and how he kind of went into the, you know, the locker room Monday. Going to miss a guy like that on offense, a leadership. And that's something that I, I think we continue to miss on defense. Somebody just steps up and says, hey, take a look at this. Take a look at that. This is where you need to prove. This is where you need to get better. And we keep kind of putting this on the players, and it, part of it is on the players, right? It's always going to fall back. There's There has to be back and forth here, but I always go back to leadership. It's like, where's the leadership on the defense, right? Somebody they can kind of, I feel like everyone's kind of looking at one another, like, who's going to make the right call here? Who's going to make the decision here? 
And uh, ultimately, uh, again, that, that still falls back uh, to Billy. So got a big game against FSU. Battle of the backups should be an exciting one. Nobody knows what either quarterback can truly or really bring. And each coach has a week to implement their new quarterback. Again, what does excite me is what we saw with Max Brown gives us some insight for DJ Lagway. So we we're trying to flip the big time wide receivers. We're trying to do all these things. Max Brown, I believe, should be your biggest selling point at the end of the year. Seeing what he's able to do in this offense, which will look similar to next year's offense, outside hopefully some improvements on the offensive line, is going to be what the DJ Lagway era is going to bring, right? So if you've been trying to sell this dream with Graham Mertz, who isn't going to be your typical quarterback moving forward, who people can't really see what's happening here, you've got an opportunity now to really bring it home, to really sell to Jeremiah Smith, to sell to um, Cam, uh, I can't think of his last name currently, that's currently projected to go to Auburn now. Uh, that's an A&M commit currently. Uh, so guys like that, that have been on the fence, this is what it's going to look like actually. You've only seen bits and pieces of it. Graham Mertz, he's great. He's done a phenomenal job. We love him. You know, he'll always be a, a Gator a great, or you know, we'll appreciate him as a Gator great because the energy that he provided, but it's not the offense that Billy has drawn up for, right? Max Brown shows that. So that to me is something Billy's got to really bring home, I think, and take an opportunity here to, 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 to put a little ass whooping on uh, the, the Seminoles there. And look, defensively, I don't know. Shut it down, boys. We got some big defensive players that we want to lock in. So do us a favor and shut it down. And uh, let's, let's, let's have a good hate FSU week. I know we're frustrated. I know we're pissed off. I know we're mad, and I know we're, we're sad. But we've got one more week of this, boys and girls. Um, let's enjoy it. I know I, I find it you know, interesting. I think what's been cool about all of this throughout this entire season, it's been one hell of a season. It's been a shitty season. Uh, but I think because we've been able to come on Hero Call each week, have these conversations, I think it's, in a weird way, brought Gator Nation and closer together. Uh, you know, I think it's allowed for us to get through the season better because we all have an outlet to yell at one another and bitch at one another and vent and listen to what other people are saying. Because even last night after the show, how I was feeling, which I'm sure all of us were feeling, was looking for something to give us an answer. Like, just, I need more. I want, I want to see what's going on in the locker room. I want to see what's happening here. I want to see who's saying this. I want to see what's saying this to that, right? Like, you're just, you're left wanting more. And before this outlet of us, you know, doing call-in shows, there was none of that. So, I think, you know, I appreciate you guys calling in because without that, you know, out the call-in show doesn't work. So, thank you to you guys for continuing to support the show and for, for allowing us to do this. Whether you agree with our opinions or not, I think it's been a healthy, uh, you know, growing pain uh throughout this year so i do love you guys i appreciate y'all if you guys don't come and tune in on uh tomorrow or wednesday you guys have a happy thanksgiving and uh make sure you love your family give them a hug and hopefully you know we'll have a we'll, we'll end the season the right way with a w on saturday but we got a lot of shows up until then so you guys be sure to smash the like button subscribe turn the bell on we'll see you guys in the next one peace <laughs>